In the depths of the Cold War, survival wasn't an abstract concept. It was a daily calculation. Families built fallout shelters in their backyards, governments issued pamphlets on nuclear preparedness, and entire industries grew around the fear of radiation and fallout. Yet, in all that frantic construction, a few engineers and survival experts quietly discovered a technique so effective and so simple that it outperformed most of those heavy, expensive bunkers. It didn't rely on concrete walls or blast doors. It relied on a principle older than civilization itself, the Earth's natural equilibrium. This isn't just a historical curiosity. It's a survival tactic that still outclasses most modern shelters today. Before you start digging another underground room or buying air filters online, you might want to know how Cold War scientists and survivalists discovered that a carefully designed earth-covered trench could outperform most sealed bunkers, and how you can apply that same principle to modern preparedness, off-grid living, and energy-efficient design. Cold War engineers learned that survival didn't depend on walls. It depended on the ground beneath them. In the 1950s and 60s, the U.S. Office of Civil Defense and Soviet civil engineers ran hundreds of tests on blast effects, radiation shielding, and temperature regulation. What they found was that the Earth itself provided better protection than any material humans could easily build with. Soil, especially when compacted, absorbs and deflects radiation more efficiently than concrete, and it moderates heat far more effectively. One of the most famous practical designs to emerge from that period was the Kearney Fallout Shelter, described in Nuclear War Survival Skills by Cresson H. Kearney. Instead of being a sealed concrete box, it was a semi-open trench covered with logs, plastic sheeting, and two to three feet of packed earth. Inside, the air remained breathable, the temperature stable, and radiation levels drastically reduced. In field tests, radiation inside these earth-covered shelters was less than one-tenth of that measured outside. That's not theoretical. It was proven, measured, and documented. Ah, the logic here is, well, quite straightforward. You see, six inches of packed earth can block nearly half of incoming gamma radiation. Then, if you add another two feet, you've cut exposure by roughly 90%. Stack even more, and you're almost completely protected. But, you know, what made these designs superior wasn't just the radiation shielding. It was how naturally they worked with air and temperature. Now, where most modern preppers go wrong is in focusing on fortification rather than livability. I mean, a sealed bunker might look secure, but it's really a trap if you can't circulate air or manage heat. Cold War survival engineers, they understood this early on and turned to the principle of thermal convection and passive airflow. The concept was, well, quite simple. Use buried air tubes to pull in cool, fresh air from outside while venting out warm, stale air from the top. These systems, now often called earth tubes or ground-coupled ventilation, were buried about six to eight feet underground. As outside air passed through the tubes, it was naturally cooled in summer, and warmed in winter by the surrounding soil before entering the shelter. This eliminated the need for powered fans, filters, or air pumps. It was reliable, silent, and could run indefinitely. Soviet engineers later adapted this method for underground observation posts and civilian shelters, while American homesteaders repurposed it for root cellars and storm shelters.
You can apply the same principle today by burying a 25 to 30 foot length of PVC or metal pipe at least six feet deep, leading it into a partially buried shelter or cellar. The result is a consistent, breathable airflow without dependence on electricity. Exactly what Cold War experts achieved with little more than physics and dirt. Modern underground shelters are often designed like submarines, airtight, heavy and dependent on power systems. But during the Cold War, simplicity was a survival necessity. Engineers couldn't assume access to air filters or generators. Their solution, the ventilated, earth-covered trench, was flexible, cheap and fast to build. Tests conducted by Oak Ridge National Laboratory during the 1960s showed that these shelters, when properly constructed, stayed within comfortable temperature ranges even in extreme conditions. Because they were not sealed, humidity and carbon dioxide buildup remain manageable. In contrast, fully enclosed bunkers suffered from heat retention and oxygen depletion within hours. If you were to replicate one of these shelters today, whether for emergency preparedness or, say, off-grid living, the process would be surprisingly straightforward. You'd dig a trench about three to four feet deep and wide enough for sleeping and storage space. Next, you'd lay logs, planks, or even corrugated metal sheets across the top, cover them with waterproof sheeting, and then pile on two to three feet of soil. At one end, you'd want to install an air intake pipe, buried underground, to bring in fresh air. And at the opposite end, create a small, elevated exhaust vent. This simple setup, you know, can actually sustain occupants for extended periods without relying on any external systems. Beyond emergency use, the very same design principles can enhance modern homesteads. The natural insulation of soil, well, it makes earth-covered structures ideal for things like root cellars, storm shelters, or even off-grid housing. And when you combine that with passive ventilation, these spaces stay cool, dry, and stable all year round. No air conditioning or heating needed at all. The Cold War era, you see, produced more than just fear. It produced a generation of problem solvers who learned to work with nature's constants rather than against them. Instead of trying to dominate the environment, they used its existing forces. The steady temperature of the earth, the natural flow of air, and the radiation-absorbing power of soil. These aren't outdated ideas. Honestly, they're timeless engineering truths. Today, as preppers and survival enthusiasts invest in high-cost shelters with complex systems, the lesson from the 1960s remains clear. A well-designed, earth-integrated structure offers better long-term security than any reinforced concrete vault. It's low-cost, self-sustaining, and proven in real-world conditions. That's why, when people talk about building bunkers, the smarter question might be how to use the land itself as the bunker. The Cold War showed us that survival didn't require steel or technology. It required understanding the quiet genius of natural design. Every era leaves behind forgotten knowledge. And, well, this might be one of the most valuable. The Earth-sheltered ventilation method remains one of the most efficient, sustainable and protective shelter systems ever devised. It costs almost nothing, requires no advanced materials, and functions indefinitely. Whether you're studying history, 
experimenting with sustainable architecture, or simply preparing for uncertain times, this Cold War discovery is a perfect blend of science and simplicity. So, if you're serious about survival, don't start with walls or steel doors. Start with the ground beneath your feet. The Cold War generation already proved that the planet itself is the best shield we'll ever have. If you enjoyed this dive into Cold War ingenuity and practical survival design, make sure to subscribe to In the Beginning, share this with fellow history buffs and survivalists, and keep exploring the forgotten lessons that still hold the power to keep us alive today.